Welcome everyone. This is building a robot that can play Angry Birds on a smartphone or Robots are the future of testing uh, presented today by Jason Huggins. This is a 30 minute talk with five minutes at the end reserved for questions and answers. Uh, let's give a warm welcome to Jason. All right, let's get the demo out of the way. <laughs> Been working on this all, all day. So here we go. Drum roll. Ready? Yes! <laughs> all right. OK, so now if nothing else works, you know it worked. It, like, or if, here we go. You saw it. It happened. One star, though, so that kind of sucks. I've got something to do. So OK, so I've got slides. If anyone shows up late, I'll do the demo again. But I want to just get that out of the way. Oh, whew. okay. So, um, let's see. I narrowly missed out on longest talk title by like three characters. Um, I think it's the one right after this. It has like four more characters than me. So, uh, building a robot that can play Angry Birds on a smartphone or robots for the future of testing. The, uh, perhaps the third subtitle for this could be what it's like to live with ADHD. Um, I like to... Uh, yeah, because there's a story to how we got to here in this thing. So um, I'm the uh, uh, co-creator of a project called uh, Selenium for uh, web testing. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Sauce Labs. Uh, we're a hipster, buzzword compliant startup in, uh, in San Francisco. And we do like Selenium in the cloud. Awesome stuff uh, if you need to do web testing. Um, you should heckle me on Twitter. And I'm sure people are doing that right now. Um, so. This is actually, this picture, what you're seeing is uh, version one of this robot. That's what this is right here. Um, the name of the project, roughly, is bitbeam, B-I-T-B-E-A-M, um, dot org. If you can hook me up and help me buy bitbeam.com, would love it. But right now, I've, I do have the domain hack of B-I-T-B-E dot A-M, which is awesome. Um, also, amazingly, I have, I'm a, also a collector of domains. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it. I got this like two months ago. Buildingtoy.org redirects to bitbeam.org and constructiontoy.org um, redirects to it. So, so the subtext of this talk actually is um, I, I, uh, I invented my own Lego compatible building toy, which is open source. So that's kind of like a, a thing I'll get to. Um, so that's what, these, that's what these beams are. They're bit beams. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll come back to it. So, so why the heck uh, are we doing this? So, does anyone remember the Sony Ibo robotic dog? It was like really popular in 1990. Okay, everybody. Um, and if you're not, you were born in 1998, right? Um, um, is there anyone born in 19? No, I don't want to. <laughs> so, so, um, so the thought was, okay. So I, uh, uh, putting my place in history, I had just graduated from college in 1998. Also, Lego Mindstorms had just come out either that year or the year, the next year after. Uh, Legoland, California also opened, like 98, 99, it was also the dot-com craziness. Life was amazing. And this was like the last basic like robot, um, you know, hype wave, whatever. And so Sony robot dog. So I had this idea, you know what, okay, Sony, I'll let them have the land animal market. I'm going to create robotic fish. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the name of my blog, I don't blog on it often. So I had came up with this name, Chipperfish. So chipperfish.com also, I own that one. Um, and, um, and so I was going to create robotic fish. The problem was I knew some software, but I knew nothing about electronics, knew nothing about uh, mechanics, mechanical engineering. And then to top it off, I didn't know anything about how you actually make electronics work underwater. Totally screwed. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, I you know, I, it, it never, I, I call it uh, this kind of stuff, it never passed the wife test. You know, I can never tell my wife, you know what, I'm going to quit my job and do this stuff. But, you know, the web testing stuff, that passed the wife test. So these are all kind of these toys. So um, I really did work on trying to create robotic fish. I, went to, I even went to the Shedd Aquarium, I live in Chicago, and studied how fish swim. I also got, and I probably need to eBay them now because I'm not really into this project anymore, but I learned how, swim, how fish swim, and it's actually a sine wave. And if you look at all categories of fish, the perfect sine wave action is like an eel or a snake through the water. If you watch it, you'll see, oh, that's a sine wave. And if you see a big tuna, it kind of shakes, but it kind of sort of, that's how they swim so efficiently is a sine wave. So, um, so again, I'm still like very serious. I am going to create robotic fish. 
because um, it was great. Like, you know, have all the dentists with their aquariums, but if they're robotic, you never have to clean the tank. It's a perfect idea. And then pool toys and then bath toys, I had it all planned out. Um, it's ridiculous, right? So, um, but so here's the thing. Uh, while I was prototyping the sine wave, I was doing this, of course, uh, in a 3D graph. Um, and this is when I was the lame part of my career, when I was doing things in Microsoft Excel. Uh, so I created a 3D bar graph. And I was emulating the sine wave motion. And the thing was, I started just staring at this 3D sine wave animation. I started to forget about the robot fish market that I wanted to go after. Um, and just being fascinated by this 3D animation. Meanwhile, next to my desk, I had this thing called pin art, which was kind of a popular toy from the 80s. I'm not going to ask if it was in the 80s, but um, this is one of those things you can put your face or your foot or your hand or some other part, whatever. Um, um, <laughs> so um, this is actually my first Flickr post ever. There weren't any Creative Commons licensed uh, pictures of uh, just a hand, I guess, uh, for. Uh, for pin art, so that, that's, that's my hand. Anyway, um, so the idea was, okay, I'm really fascinated by this 3D simulation, but ironically, it's trapped in a 2D computer screen. So isn't that ironic, I'm gonna do 3D simulation, but it's on a 2D piece of glass. But if I motorized every single one of a pin of a pin art display, I could have real 3D simulations in actual 3D. So then this became a way cooler project than Robotic Fish. Um, the sad thing about this story is that I had that idea that, that newer version of this idea, that was like 1999. So I've been kind of working on this, specifically actually this project, the motorized pin arts for, since 1999. Um, only, and I, I attacked, it, attacked it from three different angles, the software, the electronics, and, uh, and then the mechanics. The first thing I tackled being a software guy is the, is the software. So pinthing.com, yet another domain name. This actually works. If you do type that command in there, you will see um, the software. That's actually... Uh, can't go into it because it's uh, PyCon, but this is uh, JavaScript, WebGL, um, no, the can, uh, 3.js by Mr. Doob, I guess. But it's, uh, it's a working simulation of what could work. The idea was if I have a motorized pin art, the first thing I could do is do a clock. So I'm still working on that. Um, I think I even own hackerclock.com. So anyway, um, I think I do. Anyway, so, so I got the software thing, and it was time for me to actually, OK, software's done. Now go to mechanics and uh, electronics. Luckily, uh, Arduino came around, so I've been, I've been playing with that since like 2007. That's awesome. And then it, it came down to the hardest part of the project, was the mechanics. Um, luckily, I actually, my longest career has been playing with Legos. Um, and so here's the, this is where the project starts to accelerate. Uh, about a year ago, um, I finally reduced you know, what one pin could be. You know, there are, the technical term would be linear actuator. You want to get a linear actuator. But I need like 10,000 of them. You can go buy a linear actuator for about $100 a piece for like medical device, moving things around, pipetting for whatever. Um, but I need a billion of them. So I need to make them, of course, myself. And I finally got a prototype. Of course, my, I'm really into Lego, but not like, I don't go to Lego conventions. I just use it as a prototyping tool for making inventions. So I'm, I finally got it. So this is, the, uh, this is that, I guess you can kind of see. Wait, I guess I should do this. Right. Hold on. Where's the video screen? Right. So this is the clicker, and you can kind of see, you know, when the adult industry uh, catches onto this, I, I, I'm golden. <laughs> um, so, but this is, a, this is the clicker. This is a linear actuator that costs like maybe, you know, 50 cents to make or something. So this is finally it. And then this is a version of that, but as an array. So and imagine, again, going after the clock example, this is five over, eight down. I can do, that's one digit. And this has all of the different, uh, you know, it's the, it's the clicker, right? Um, so as I'm still prototyping this thing, um, again, this is all not day job related at all. I'm still trying to get my clock made. Um, I then realized, well, wait a second. If this is a linear, sorry, oh, screw it. <laughs> this is a linear actuator going up and down, but if I hold it upside down, this becomes something like that can touch the screen of a phone. And just so happens I work at a company that does software testing, wrote Selenium, and all it does is like click buttons all day long, right? Um, the cool thing about the, um, well, let's get back to slideshow mode. Um, the cool thing about mobile as like a disruptive technology is that actually you really need something like a human finger with all these touchscreen devices. So um, 
So like serious, so we're, so as Sauce, we're we're moving from the desktop browser support to mobile testing support. This isn't an advertisement for Sauce, but you know, mobile is changing things on how you test. The Selenium project actually has um, iPhone, iPad, and Android support for about a year, um, and you can do it all through uh, through the a through the APIs, the SDKs, and do all that. But that's no fun, right? The, what's fun is to actually create a little robotic finger that can uh, can do it. So even though I had this little clicker that start, that's still I'm still driving towards that. Um, hacker clock, um, but it just so happens if you flip it upside down, it becomes uh, a touch sensor thing that can, uh, that can play Angry Birds. Um, so so BitBeamBot is what I'm calling it. If you can come up with a better name for this, I would love to hear it. Also, um, I'm sorry, this is a, what was that? We get the domain though. Oh, oh shoot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if I'll, yeah. I don't know what my price is. Anyway, um, so I wanted to get to be actually Selenium powered for the conference. It's not, so I need to scratch that out. Um, but I'm still trying to drive towards that. Um, so what it is is a combination of Arduino, Bitbeam, which I told you about. Um, the, the design for uh, Bitbeam is I use an open source tool called Open uh, SCAD. Uh, is, I've, I've been told that's the proper way to pronounce it, not Open SCAD. Um, so it's Open SCAD. And, uh, and then I laser cut it at the tech shop in San Francisco. So, but I live in Chicago, it's a long story. But anyway, um, and then the software is uh, Arduino and C obviously on the, on the board and then uh, Python. I have to scratch out the Selenium part, anyway. Um, so yeah, what I'm trying to get to is at some point, um, Selenium can support Firefox or Chrome or Safari. It would be nice to be able to swap it out and just say iPad, but with robot or something. And you can just put an iPad underneath there and you can test it. Um, and so one of the things, as far as kind of just more demo stuff, as far as the, what Selenium does, and this is actually all robots, um, I'm looking at this as like, this is baby steps. First, Selenium is just purely software. Then it's actually this robotic arm thing. But imagine, I think maybe five, 10 years from now, there's gonna be some version of Selenium that actually could walk around the room. And I realize that the, the problem for software testing is the same thing as robots just walking around the room. You need to find stuff and then do stuff to it. So I think I envision a world like Selenium, you need to have locators. IDs, CSS selectors, uh, XPath, you should not use XPath, but XPath exists, all these different things. And I look at it like um, QR codes are the same kind of thing. So there's no reason why you couldn't put a QR code everywhere and then have some robot that kind of sort of acts like Selenium and just scans the room and looks for QR codes and, uh, and can act that way. Um, anyway, so actually, so on that note, computer vision. So there's another aspect of this project. You saw the demo here. Um, and I'm going to bring up a different demo. So um, has anyone heard of the OpenCV project, Open Computer Vision? About half the room. Okay, I'm going to show you a quick demo. So um, I hope that doesn't mean the power went out. It just means, there you go. And you're now going to know my password. Let's see. Okay. So that's, you saw that demo. And if you came in late, let's just do it again, right? Why not? Oh, that sucks. Okay, that's why, that's why I did it at the beginning. Right, okay, so moving on. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's see, where's the other window? Um, all that thoughts. Oh, darn it. I had it all set. Terminator, I think that's where it was. Terminator Vision, that's what it was. Sorry, guys. Party foul. Where's that guy? PyCon Skynet, that's right it was. <laughs> Projects, PyCon, Skynet. Got it, so, Terminator Vision. Hopefully it doesn't crash the computer. So what this is using is um, the OpenCV library and I'm using it to find, there, there's this thing, there's this method, I'll show you the code for it, uh, match template. So it's taking, I'm using this uh, device, which I, it's all taped up here, so it's called VGA to USB. That's what I'm using. So I'm taking the pure video out of the device and bringing that into my computer. Uh, it's a company um, made in Canada, so it's this little PCI board. I'm hoping to, at some point, if I can get my hands on a Raspberry Pi and then somehow learn how VGA signals work and anyway, get the open source version of that. But anyway, so I'm with iPad 2 and up, but you can't do this with iPad 1, with iPad 2 and up and iPhone 4S and up, you can get pure uh, video, the, the actual video stream out of the device. 
and I assume for Android as well. Um, and so now once I have that screen, I have this open CV program that's just pulling, pulling uh, frames out, and then I'm, for, in every frame I'm looking for this little screenshot. Um, and then when I find it, I, I draw a little rectangle. So if I move it around a little bit, um, like it's not going to draw any rectangles. Hold on. Did I crash my computer? Also, when it finds, uh, when it, finds it, it uh, hold on a second. I'm just going to wave my hands and say, yeah, that worked. Um, let's, actually, let me, show you the, let me show you the code. So this is, this is the code. I've been told to do black on white and syntax highlighting, so I'm learning my lessons. All right. Um, so I'm opening up the template file. Uh, the window name is Skynet, and this is my threshold. This is kind of like basically fuzzy matching. I don't even know what that number is, but that's just kind of trial and error what it is. Created, a, created the, um, the window. And this is kind of ghetto. I'm actually doing a system call out to, to the libraries for, um, uh, from Epifan is the name of the place. And I call the V2U command and, and get, tell it to grab a frame. I then open that frame and then use, this is the key command right here, match template that actually matches that little picture and finds it somewhere in the image. And then somewhere in there, um, it either will find it or it won't find it. And then it just kind of uh, plays there. So the reason why I do this is that right now when I showed you that demo, let's tempt fate here and do it again. Um, or no, I won't. But I will show you the video feed. Um, so so the, the goal is to have my robot actually play the game, but then use the computer vision to actually find the stuff, and then kind of, I'm kind of coming at it from two different angles. Um, one of the other things I've learned uh, um, is, um, what you didn't see in my commands was very explicit, uh, and it was all trial and error to get that thing to work before the demo. Um, I've learned that I need to learn this really fancy phrase called inverse kinematics. If anyone knows inverse kinematics, wow, holy cow. I know nothing about it, but apparently um, I need to know that to get this thing. <laughs> Uh, to work. Um, so, uh, yeah, 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 that does not get applause, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I misplaced where my terminals are, so I'm not going to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so all these are just three servos, and they just go from zero to 90, and I'm just very explicitly saying, like, okay, X or servo number one, go to 50. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, try to 60. Um, so, um, Anyway, I know nothing about that, so if you can help me, I really need to learn inverse kinematics, so please like, bootstrap my brain. Okay, I am going to do one more demo. How much more time do I have? We have seven minutes. I'm going to see if I can... Uh... Oh, I did. Yes. Python. Let's try this. I'm going to shoot one more demo. I did this in the green room. Does that work? Yes, okay. Let's see if I can do this in two minutes before Q&A. Come on. Seven minutes before Q&A. Oh, I've got plenty of time. Okay, great. Me worried. Chill out, chillax. All right. Yeah, yeah, let's Google that. Right, okay, so let's play a game. Um, one of the things I learned, actually, in trying to get ready for this talk is especially trying to, um, as I now try to get the open computer vision stuff working, combined with the inverse command X, whatever I have to learn, but th this computer vision stuff is also really hard. I realized, holy cow, why did I pick Angry Birds to do as, as a test <laughs> case? So, because um, the things are moving around, different levels, different birds, all kinds of crazy stuff. So I realized, wow, okay, I should um, simplify uh, the project. I was thinking even simpler than this, I should probably get a painting program and then have it draw a box and then use computer vision to find a box, whatever. It's so like tic-tac-toe actually kind of maybe was what I could get done for today. Um, so I'm going to kind of play against my, my robot here, tic-tac-toe. This also reminds you of War Games, another movie that I hope most people know. Um, so that would, this would be the second command. Yes! Yeah, my, my methods are one, two, and three, right? So I'm not going to let, I'm not going to try to win. So I'll just do that, and then I'll do this. There you go. So the robot won. I let him win.
Okay. What was that? Monster Jr., right. Um, I'll see. I've got some other kind of demos in here. Let's see if I've got X. I can do B is my robot. B.move X. A lot of ghetto commands in here. Yeah, so, so this is kind of how I've been kind of prototyping stuff. This is the, and also I know in Delta Robotics pedantry, it should not not be called X, Y, and Z, but whatever. Um, I don't know what it should be. Um, and that's the Y arm, I guess I'm calling it. And then that is the Z arm. So it's one of those things of, and then I've got these three commands. So I've got like fifth X, That goes to 50. Let's, let's move this guy over. Yeah, seriously, this is what I've been doing all day long to try to get the demos to work. <laughs> uh, let's see, oh, okay, let's see what happens. 70, okay, that moves it over, then do that. So if I knew, it, whoa, don't do that. Um, yeah, let's do that again. Wait, so I could do, and then I've got some helper commands up. That didn't, oh yeah, okay. And then down. That didn't work. Hold on. All right, something's going on. All right. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> my, my bot is angry now. Um, right, right. So, so if, I, if I knew inverse kinematics, I actually could have that level of abstraction that it can then some, at some point go down to all the different stuff. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different things. And again, welcome to uh, uh, adult ADHD. There's lots of things going on. Um, and it's like kind of fun little projects to kind of get, uh, to get it going. Um, yeah, and also, and then I, uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is this little helicopter. Um, so I'm kind of documenting this. Again, kind of goes back to, it's not just about the robots, it's about that open source Lego-y thing. Um, so this is kind of like, uh, I'm going to document the, kind of the instructions on how to make this thing. So this is like a little, um, I think actually, maybe I'll show you this, and then I'll open it up to Q&A. All that just sits here. There's uh, an Arduino that I picked up at Radio Shack, actually. So I don't know if that makes Radio, if that makes Radio Shack cool or Arduino not cool. Uh, <laughs> but I, I can, you can get uh, Arduinos at Radio Shack now. And they also have this thing called a motor shield. Um, so it's way better than my ghetto kind of Frankenstein wiring over there. So it actually, it's kind of a clean design. So Arduino plus a motor shield, and then, um, I don't know, a couple of dollars worth of um, bit beams, and then a little stepper. So trying to kind of one of those things of like now I've created this monster of stuff trying to come up with simpler versions. Also another thing I did, um, I have something called um, BitPad that's on the BitPeam blog that's just like five pieces of BitBeam and you can use that as an iPad stand. Um, so I'm trying to like just kind of like build out the catalog, uh, bootstrap an open source Lego catalog of fun stuff that you could build. It just so happens, yeah, robots is kind of what I picked, but hey, got to start somewhere. Um, Anyway, so I think at that point, I'm just going to take my winnings here and just uh, no more demos and just uh, say, yeah, let's open up Q&A. So thanks. Thank, thank you, Jason. Uh, if anyone has questions, please come right on up to the microphone. And we've got uh, about uh, seven minutes, I think, for Q&A. So. Great. Hi, so you said you're releasing this under a, an open license. I'm Chris Weber from Creative Commons. What license are you using? Hi, um, I think I started with the do whatever the F you want, and then I upgraded or downgraded, depending on your preferences, to uh, either, I think MIT uh, or BSD. I think I used MIT. That was the easier one to copy and paste, I think. Whatever. So yeah, MIT. Excellent. So. Thank you. Yes, yes. Hi. So you've said a few times, uh, you've mentioned Lego a few times, like open source Lego, but also Lego compatible? Or so yeah, yeah, oh so crap, I totally of... forgot to mention that. So you if you totally want to build your own Lego, you need to have them. And, and so uh, my GitHub, github.com slash hugs slash bitbeam, you can get the open SCAD file. Um, and so what, to be Lego compatible, it's Lego Technic compatible, um, each hole is... Um, 2.4 millimeters radius, and then each hole is eight millimeter, the center of each hole is eight millimeters apart from each other, and then four millimeters away from the edge, depending on how good you're laser cutting. Um, and then the beams themselves are eight millimeters wide, and, um, and this actually is 5 16ths, it's about the same. 5 16th inch in imperial units is 
practically eight millimeters. The other thing I actually totally forgot to mention, and this is like shame on me for, uh, for mentioning it, this is actually a miniature version of an older project called Gridbeam. So it's really not so much Lego. It was, um, I went to the Maker Faire in 2010. Um, long answer to your story, uh, question. But um, Maker Faire 2010 Bay Area. I met these guys, awesome guys, Phil and Richard Jurgensen, and I bought their Gridbeam book. It's like large versions of, of Lego and a rector set. You can, they build cars and, I'm kidding, or not kidding. Um, they build electric vehicles, a, a, a train, they built, and then down to earth, shelves, desks. Actually, this is one of the things that I kind of want to get out there as a meme. If you want to build your own standing desk, because that's kind of hip and cool, you should, be, uh, you should buy the grid beam book and then build a standing desk out of grid beam. So imagine instead of um, these beams that are, you know, eight millimeters wide, you just get, it's the same kind of ratio of square dowels and, and, and holes that are apart. Um, you can kind of see here, this in grid beam vocabulary, this is called a tri-joint. You have three beams going in three different directions. If you use beams that are two inches, two inches wide, uh, or two inches square, instead of uh, this small, you can actually can build kind of like Ikea Ivar kind of uh, furniture. And, but you can make it yourself. Anyway, so I'm trying to help those guys. Um, I, I, met, I visited them a couple weeks ago, and um, the, the sad quote was, um, you know, he knew he was living in the future, but he didn't realize he was living 20 years in the future. Um, and I was like, man, I feel bad for you. But hey, here we are. So um, I, think, I think their future is now. Uh, so grid beam is really cool for building big stuff. And then I miniaturized it. That's why I called it bit beam. Complete oversight for me not to mention that. Anyway, thanks for asking. Hey, so I don't think you mentioned it, but the, the tic-tac-toe demo, so that's just using like pre-computed coordinates to touch, right? So you're not doing computer vision on the board Total yet? Total ghetto, just okay. for the demo. Um, but so is, that's, that's, I guess, the end goal for the whole like, Selenium package? You want to provide like a really high level right. way to just right. here's, click this image and you know, find it? Yeah, yeah. So, so in Selenium specifically, you do like find elements by ID or CSS locator or something. I want to do actually really stealing an idea from the Sukuli project. I first got it from them. And they use the same OpenCV library. Is anyone from Sukuli here? by the way, or at the conference. I would love to talk with them. But um, Sukuli is the same thing. It's a Python, Jython, OpenCV under the hood. But they do image locator by PNG file. So that's what I want to do, is add an image locator to Selenium. And that, under the hood, will actually be calling into the OpenCV library to go find it. And it'll either take a screenshot if it's on a computer, or we'll take you know, some whatever video feed that you specify. So yeah, image locator and Selenium support is kind of what I'm trying to drive towards. And that's where I get to add Selenium back to my, my presentation. Um, when you were designing your linear actuator, did you consider using a bar magnetized pin instead of gears? That is the most, so like use, magnet, like use magnets, magnetism, yeah. Like almost like a solenoid, perhaps, some kind of like that. That's the most frequently suggested suggestion. And my answer to that is, yes, I need to do that. Okay. Um, but it, for some reason, it was easier for me, wherever it is, it's in my back pocket. I lost, no, here it is. Um, I'm a big fan of ghetto design and that stuff, that scared me. Like I needed lots of power, lots of magnets. Like these rubber bands were from like Walgreens, I think. This is, uh, <laughs> this is, um, yeah, the, I'm, yeah, that is a rubber band. I should use a timing belt. Um, and, oh, all these are Lego Technic gears, by the way. I don't know if you can kind of see that. So this is w another reason to be Lego Technic compatible, is I can kind of ch solve the chicken or egg problem. At some point, I need to figure out how to injection mold my own gears, but um, I don't know how to do that yet. So I'm kind of a fan of like Lego gears and crappy rubber bands, and that was like, that's ghetto, I like ghetto, and that was, I'll get there when I'm like fancy and, and I'll do it, thanks. Are we all set? Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Going once, going twice. No one else? All right, cool. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much.